ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون All praise is due to Allah whom we praise and turn to help and forgiveness and guidance to the right path and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our souls and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our sins for whomsoever Allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever is misguided then only Allah the almighty can guide him and I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah the Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. May the peace and blessings and prayers be upon him until the day of judgment. O you who have believed, fear Allah as he truly should be feared. And die only in a state of Islam. Die only as Muslims. My dear and respected brothers know that the fitan trials and tribulations of this life are rampant and widespread amongst us some of these fitan some of these trials and tribulations are related to a person's religion related to a person's religion we see some people apostating we see some people having doubts and misconceptions and misunderstandings about Allah and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about certain laws and legislations in their religion whilst We'll see, we see other fitan related to money and wealth. People earning money through haram means and spending it in haram ways and means. We see other fitan related to related to the opposite sex in having inappropriate and promiscuous relationships with them which leads to many other evils sexually transmitted diseases children born out of wedlock and the likes we see other fitan related to governance and authority people being irresponsible and unjust and using this authority in a corrupt manner by spreading corruption on earth we see other fitan related to knowledge gaining non-beneficial knowledge from untrustworthy and unqualified people and then spreading this knowledge without verifying its authenticity and the list goes on and on and on concerning these fitan Allah the Almighty says أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah, the Almighty, my dear brothers, says, the people who say we believe think that we will not test and trial them. Indeed, we tested and trialed those who were before them so that we may make evident those who are truthful and those who are liars those who are truthful and those who are liars 
and our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us in an authentic hadith that the happy and successful person is he who avoids and averts falling into trials and tribulations, falling into these fitan. He says, Inna sa'id, inna sa'ida laman junnib al fitan. Indeed, the happy and successful person is one who averts and avoids falling into trials and tribulations. And here the question arises. How do we attain this success and happiness? By averting falling into trials and tribulations that affect our iman, that affect our relationship with our Lord, the Almighty. Without a doubt, my dear brothers, first and foremost, you must fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. For whosoever fears Allah, the Almighty, wherever he is, Allah will protect him and safeguard him. And guide him to all that is good in his worldly affairs and in his hereafter affairs. And know that the road to paradise is surrounded by trials and tribulations and it is furnished by tests and trials in your life it is surrounded and furnished by tests and trials in your life I'm going to shed light on some of the means and ways of bi'idhnillah if you were to take them on board that will save you and safeguard you and protect you from falling into the fitan, the tests and trials that may face you during your life. One of the most important, one of the most important means that safeguards and protects you from falling into fitan is supplicating, dua, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and safeguard you from falling into such trials and tribulations. And our dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught his Sahaba and his Ummah to generally supplicate Allah the Almighty and turn to Him in seeking refuge from all types of fitan, all types of trials and tribulations. He says in an authentic hadith, تَعَوَّذُوا بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الْفِتَنِ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنِ Seek refuge in Allah from all trials and tribulations. That which is apparent and that which is hidden. And this dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-fitan ma zahara minha wa ma batan protects you, insha'Allah, from all types of tribulations and trials. That's generally. And specifically, he commanded us to seek refuge in Allah from certain trials and tribulations at the end of every prayer. At the end of every prayer. And this shows you how important it is for us to seek help and guidance and protection in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these trials and tribulations. He says, the, he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith, إِذَا تَشَهَّدَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ أَرْبَعْ فَلْيَقُلْ اللهم إني أعوذ بك من عذاب النار من عذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن فتنة ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال If one of you sits down for the tashahud the last tashahud in his prayer then he should seek refuge in Allah from four things 
He should say, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the, from the whole fire. And I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave. And I seek refuge in you from the trials and tests and tribulations of life and death. And I seek refuge in you from the evils of the trials and tribulations of the Antichrist, the Dajjal. And this shows how important this command, this guidance of our dear Prophet wasallam, is for our well-being. Every prayer. To the point where some of our scholars, one of the greatest of scholars, Al-Imam Ahmad said it's obligatory to seek refuge in these four things. In the prayer, in the fard prayer. Even though the majority of scholars say it's recommended, but this is one of the great Imams who says it's obligatory to seek refuge in Allah from these four trials and tribulations that you will face during your life, in your grave, and in the hereafter. So we seek refuge in Allah from the trials and tribulations that may come our way, that which are apparent and that which are hidden. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله in the name of Allah and all praises due to Allah may the peace and blessings and prayers be upon his prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم my dear and respected brothers one of the most important of means to save and protect yourselves from falling into trials and tribulations is to attain sacred knowledge from the Quran and Sunnah and adhere to these two most important of protectors the Quran and Sunnah for he who upholds the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah will never be misguided bi'ithnillah and Allah will inspire him Allah will make him speak words of wisdom and protect and safeguard him from falling into all types of trials and tribulations if you were to uphold and implement the Quran and Sunnah to uphold and implement this sacred knowledge because sacred knowledge pushes away from you any doubts concerning your Lord and his prophet and this religion any misconceptions and misunderstandings without a doubt it is a source of protection and safeguard Allah the Almighty says are those who have knowledge equal to those who don't have knowledge? Without a doubt, the answer is no. And our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَمْرَيْنِ لَنْ تَضِلُّوا مَا تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةَ نَبِيِّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I have left for you two things. You will never go astray if you hold on to them. That's the solution. Holding on to the Quran and Sunnah. The book of Allah and the Sunnah of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In another hadith, very important hadith. And many of us ask at times, the fitan are so many. There's so many calls out there, so many sects out there, so many sayings, ideologies. What's the way out? What's the solution? The Prophet ﷺ gives you that solution. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ تَمَسَّكُوا بِهَا وَعَضُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِذِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ 
The problem is there, yes, without a doubt. But the solution is also there for you. If you want enlightenment, if you want guidance, as has come in this beautiful hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever lives after me will see a lot of conflict. Okay, that's the problem. What's the solution? He says, adhere to my sunnah. Stick to, adhere, implement my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs. Tamassaku biha, hold on to it. Hold on to it strongly. Don't leave it. To the point where the Prophet ﷺ says, hold on to it with your molar teeth. Huh? With your molar teeth, strongly. Because you'll never go astray if you're to hold on to the sunnah of, of the Prophet and the sunnah of his khulafa. May Allah be pleased with them all. Then he says, and he warns us from falling into newly invented matters in the religion. He says, every newly invented matter in the religion is an innovation. And every innovation is a misguidance and every misguidance is in the hellfire. Simple as that. Simple. Wallahi simple. Did the Prophet do it? Did the Prophet say it? Yes. Ala rasul ayn. Did the Prophet not do it? Not say it? Keep away from it. Is there anything hard in that, my dear brothers? Wallahi, there's nothing hard in it. Very simple ideology. A methodology to follow. Al-Imam Malik, Rahimahullah, Imam Darul Hijrah, the leaders of the four schools of thought, says, As-Sunnah, Safina to Nuh, Man Rakibaha, Naja, Waman Tarakaha, Halaka wa Gharik. The Sunnah is the ship of Nuh, or like the ship of Nuh. He who rides it, he will. Huh? He will what? He will be saved. He who abandons it, he will be destroyed and drowned. He will drown. That's the simple message from this great Imam. Therefore, adhere to the Sunnah of your dear Prophet. Adhere to the book of your Lord, the Almighty. As he, the Almighty, says in his holy book, Whoever follows my guidance will never go astray, nor will he suffer. That great man, great companion Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, ضمن الله لمن كرأ القرآن لمن اتبع القرآن أن لا يضل في الدنيا ولا يشقى في الآخرة. Allah has guaranteed the one who follows the Qur'an, adheres to the Qur'an, reads the Qur'an, that he will never go astray, nor will he suffer or go through misery on the Day of Judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst the people of the Qur'an and Sunnah and who adhere to it and implement it and uphold it in our lives. We ask Him, the Almighty, to save us from all trials and tribulations, that which is apparent and that which is hidden. And inshallah, in the next few weeks, we'll be shedding more light on how to safeguard and protect yourselves from falling into the many trials and tribulations that we face in our lives. Allahumma azza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adhil al-shirka wa al-mushrikeen wa aqbit a'da al-deen. اللهم انصر من نصر هذا الدين واخذل من خذل هذا الدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وقرله إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين واجعلنا من الراشدين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المكروبين من المسلمين واقض الدين عن المدينين من المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات 
وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأخذ دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة